Okay, everybody, so uh, this really pains me. It really does, but um, I will never, I will never let a narcissist try to step on me ever again. And uh, you people out here, you can call me angry. You can call me whatever you like. Um, I see Grace for Purpose finally came out and attacked me. Well, that's very good because the only way that you can tell you're asleep is by acting like a sleeper. See? Sleeper is like sleeper does. Now let's get to the truth and stop all your sleeper nonsense. Last night, David Digger put out Three false gospels. I will put this in the description. False gospels exposed. Discerning deception. Now I want you to hear what he says about the prosperity gospel in the beginning. He is a prosperity preacher. And I'm about to prove it to you right now. I'm also about to prove to you what an abuser he is, what a covert narcissistic abuser he is. And if you would like to keep this going, I will dig deeper and deeper and deeper to expose his black soul. That's really all I'm going to say about this. The only thing I've said over and over, over and over to every single one of these people was to leave me alone. I don't want anything from them. I don't want to be associated with them. I can't stomach how they are deceiving people out here. I don't want anything from these people. Yet what is constantly coming back and, well, I have to be very honest here. It's coming back from these same people who are defending each other. Why? Because they're all narc prosperity preachers. That's why. Saying uh, it was, uh, what's his face? Daniel Adams, who the other day made the video on uh, God men, a men of God. Men of God should not be exposed. Well, here's the deal. Daniel and everybody else, when you start behaving like men of God, there will be no need to expose you. Gabish. Grace for Purpose said, said something that, that I'm angry and that I want to be like these people. I don't, and it's, of course it's a man saying this. Where are you idiots coming up with, what demon is speaking in your ear to you? Where are you idiots coming up with this stuff? And what makes you think that anyone who's out here gaslighting somebody, I want to tell you that gaslighting is the most serious form of narcissistic abuse is gaslighting. Gaslighting will, will actually literally make a person believe they're crazy as what David Digger had tried to do to me. And I, I'm ashamed to even say it, but he was actually succeeding. And I'm getting ready to play the video that I made to him. And you will see, here I am, a grown woman who graduated from a doctoral program in healthcare administration. Here I am on my couch saying, do I not know what the word believe means? Maybe I don't know what the word believe means. This is where these people had me at from their gaslighting, telling me that I was not a Christian and I was demon possessed. No, the only people demon possessed are these fakes out here. 
Now, I want you to hear what, what uh, Digga has to say about what a prosperity preacher is. And people should watch about who they call a prosperity preacher when it's not true. Well, I've done my research. I know what a prosperity preacher is. And I know who his guru was. Benny Hinn. We all know about Benny Hinn, don't we? Well, I got a nice little video for you about Benny Hinn. Everyone preaches to you another gospel. Let him be accursed. Those harsh words were written by Paul the Apostle in defense of the one true gospel. I want to expose three false gospels. If you care about the true gospel and you want nothing but the truth, write it in the comment section right now. These three words, I want truth. Let that be your public declaration of your love for truth. But before we can expose the fake, we have to look at the real. This is the gospel simply defined. The good news that because of his mercy and through the death and resurrection of his perfect son, Jesus, God redeems sinners who otherwise have no hope of salvation. Sinners receive God's free gift of salvation by grace through faith. Now, even though the gospel is very simple, and even though the gospel is very clear in the scripture, sometimes people will pervert it or twist it either intentionally or unintentionally. One of the perversions of the gospel is called, number one, the prosperity gospel. And this is a message that promises and prioritizes health, wealth, and happiness while disdaining sacrifice and hardship. Now, to be clear, prosperity is biblical, but prosperity is not the central message of the gospel. The Lord does bless his children. God does bless those who follow him. God does increase our resources if we're good stewards and if we demonstrate generosity and if we walk in his will. Yes, we understand the blessings of God. We understand that good things come from God. Don't miss what he said. If, if we demonstrate generosity... Here's the truth of the matter. God will bless you as his child as long as it is in accordance with his will. Not if you're generous with your money. This is the prosperity preacher. You could be a homeless person, not have any money, and God will bless you if it is within his will. I have actually heard Digga say that giving your tithes and offering are a part of worship. They are worship. So if you don't give, you're not worshiping to God. Okay? This is all prosperity preaching. It's all prosperity preaching. And all you have to go do is listen to his older videos, you will hear it plain as day because his guru is Benny Hinn. We understand that there are seasons of favor and abundance, but we also understand that this is not central to the gospel. The promise of the gospel is not health, wealth, and happiness. And in fact, people who believe the prosperity gospel are often surprised by tragedy. They're caught off guard by hardship. They feel entitled to only perfectly ideal circumstances. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 to 15 says, Anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials, gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. But on the judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives... That builder will receive a reward, but if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. For the most part, the cost of following Christ is much higher than most would want to believe. Matthew 16, 24 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, I'm going to have this in the description so you can hear the whole thing. I want you to understand that these pastors all started changing their tunes as I kept being out here condemning the prosperity teaching because all of them 
We're telling you the same thing. The more you give, the more God will bless you. They all said the same exact thing. Go and listen to their older videos. That's all I can tell you. I am not one to lie. I do not lie. And this narc thinks he's going to call me a liar. He's only going to be exposed more and more. And I make no apologies for anything. Because the, in fact, the only thing I've ever said was that I wanted to be left alone. So this video will be in the description. I believe this was the one. Can Christians be demon possessed? So here he was telling me that now he had for months been telling me covertly, of course, that I was not a Christian, that I was demon possessed and that the Holy Spirit was not here. And I want you to understand that of course, he, he presents himself online as the expert in the Holy Spirit. So when this guy is telling me that the Holy Spirit is not here and that I'm demon-possessed, I was like, oh, wait a second. I know that God brought me through the dark night of the soul. I know that God brought me through the dark night of the soul. What is this guy talking about? He started flipping my brain. This is what psychopaths do when they gaslight people. This is what gaslighting does to a person. He literally had me sitting here saying, am I not a Christian? My whole entire life I was raised in the Christian church. Am I really not a Christian? Am I really a demon? This is what this guy had me doing here. Now, as I said, I never went to Hinduism to look how to, to, to get evil powers to hurt people. I went very sick and I was looking for God. I'm brought back to the Bible. I went, I, I found Hinduism and I was very sick looking for God and I found the devil. And then the Holy Spirit brings me back to the Bible and I find more devils. These people have been attacking me ever since I spoke up that Signorelli was wrong, that the third eye was real and it was dangerous, and that meditation had helped me heal visual flashbacks. I have been brutally attacked by these idiot narcs almost a year now. Almost a year now. At this point... It is not that I'm angry, although I, I can see in my face I look angry. I'm fed up. I'm fed up with this narc. I'm fed up with this narc. Almost a year now I'm going through this. Now Grace for Purpose wants to chime in. I'll knock you all the hell down. Do you understand? Because when you have a person out here that's not out for name and fame and doesn't want anything that you have, you cannot do anything to me. Do you understand? You cannot do anything to me. So grace for purpose. Whoever that person was that made that video is a total moron. Sleeper moron. Victim basher. Had no idea what he was talking about. You see, if I wanted what you people had out here with these big pages and name and fame and prosperity preaching and steal everybody's money from them, I would have just became very timid and never said another word so that these... These fake ones out here, these money-hungry fake ones out here, prosperity preachers out here, could teach me what they know so I could get rich too and I could con people out of their money too. If that's what I wanted, that's what I would have done. Obviously, it's not what I want. 
And the only thing I have consistently set out here is that I want to be left alone. I want to be left alone. Right now, it's a matter of, I will not die. I will not die. I will live and I will share God's word. I will not die. But you people will. Because as I've said all along, you people are the only ones who have something to lose. Because I sure don't. I sure don't. I don't want to die. Please. Is it true that Christians can be demon-possessed? Let's take a look at what the Bible actually says. And first and foremost, no one ever said I was demon-possessed. That is his ignorance. That is his stupidity. That is his hatred in his heart because of all the stuff that was going on with these other pastors that they were brutally attacking me because I spoke up and corrected Signorelli. This is his own hatred, his own pride, and his own ego that he had to get in on the fight to try to stop me down. I'm going to show him just what I'm made of because I didn't get this far with all of this abuse and I'm still ticking. Make sure you're subscribed to Encounter TV on YouTube and click that notification bell when you do subscribe so that you can receive notices when we put out new content. You can also follow us wherever you're watching us. Can Christians be demon-possessed? There are really two approaches to answering this question. One way to answer this question is to look at your experience or the experiences of others. Now, here's the only issue with looking to experience as the primary means of authority. Different people have different experiences that contradict one another. Some may say, in my experience, I found that everyone who has ever been demon-possessed wasn't truly born again. And still others might say, oh, I've seen many Christians manifest. They might even say, I myself was delivered from a demon as a Christian. Now, experience does count. The question is, how do you interpret your experiences in light of the word? It's possible that some mistake an emotional healing or a breaking of a stronghold for deliverance from a demon. So to avoid confusion, we look to a better way of answering that question. We must first look to God's word. Scripture holds more authority than our stories. We have to remember that the Bible is our ultimate authority. Now, don't get me wrong, experiences count, and experiences can be very good things, but experiences must be interpreted through the truths of Scripture. And don't take it personal if the Bible doesn't say what you want it to say. Instead, humble yourself before the Word of God. Be encouraged to know that your identity is found in Christ, not in what you believe about spiritual warfare doctrines. The Bible says, but don't rejoice because evil spirits obey. Humble yourself. Did you get those words? Humble, you, humble yourself because I kept talking about their egos. Their egos. So he says, humble yourself to me. Telling me already because I know he's been saying it the whole time. Not that I'm taking something personally. Not that I'm paranoid about something. I am not demon possessed. Never have been demon possessed did need help, and was brutally attacked. These people are not men of God. These people are not men of God. What is wrong with you people out here? No, as a matter of fact, I went to go speak to a man of God today. I can't tell you what the difference was. It was massive difference to actually feel the love of Christ come from this man. Pastor at my church. And so, although he did not uh, agree because he is a Baptist, although he did not agree with um, casting out demons and all this other stuff, as he said, it, th that is outside of the realm of salvation. Do we agree on salvation? And that is the main issue. If you agree on salvation, then you are in fact a Christian. 
and this arrogant, no good, prosperity preaching phony was out here telling me that I was demon possessed and I was not a Christian. And now I want you to hear the video that I made back to him. I'm putting all of this in the description so that you can hear it all fully. Because here is the evidence. I am not a liar, never have been a liar, never will I be a liar. And it will be a cold day in hell before any narc thinks he's going to abuse me and get away with it. And I'm just going to fall down and take it. Those days are long gone, demon. Those days are long gone. I would like to say thank you very much for um, this video that you put out tonight on um, on the demon possession, and um, it doesn't help me in the least. And I, I'm not being sarcastic here. Here's the way I, I would like to present this my situation to you, because nothing that you've said accurately describes my situation. And see, this has been this has been the problem the whole time. Out here telling me, gaslighting me, gaslighting me, telling me that I'm demon possessed and I'm not a Christian, and every negative thing that you can even imagine, and nothing that he said even applied to me. He doesn't know me from a hole in the wall. But his ego and his pride says he was the expert on the Holy Spirit and I don't have the Holy Spirit here I am after all of that abuse that he put me through thanking him but now let me try to tell you my my experience because what you said is not what's here I will put this in the description for you too There's another video here that he made with Alan Parr or Parks, whatever his name is. And in this video, he says that people that attack you or call you out or do exposed videos, um, they think they're hurting the other person, but they're really hurting themselves. Well, first of all, I am not trying to hurt any of these pastors at all. At all. I have been telling them to leave me alone for almost a year now. For almost a year now. I didn't want to hurt any of these people. I've been telling them to leave me alone for over, for almost a year now. I will not be abused. Do we need sign language on that? I will not be abused. And if you continue this, Digga, I'm going to go deeper and deeper into what kind of narcissist you actually are. You will get an exposed video, honey, and it will be right down to your black soul. You are no man of God. Let's take a look, a brief look. So the fun thing with the serpent is, how does a serpent talk? The ugly well, truth like about prosperity gospels. To crawl on it. Yes, because Nithya and Andagoons now are stopping me from, from being able to, to show my video. Like, I don't have enough going on in my life, right? And these asshole fake pastors out here think that what they say is of any importance. You see, a man of God would think about somebody other than themselves. They are not a man of God. None of them. None of them.
Bear with me one second. Now I gotta lock the, the goons out of here. These skanks. Because I haven't even turned my my uh, my uh, Wi-Fi on on my phone for a few days, because I'm tired of dealing with these idiots. They're all narcs. Every last one of them. They're all narcs. Okay, so now my Wi-Fi is on. Well, um, my uncle is seen as an anointed man of God and we were told all our life growing up that he is the greatest man of God in our entire generation do you believe Jesus died for your healing then it's yours if you're not a giver you're a loser if you're not a giver you're a loser big stages, big stadiums, big crowds, everything there. And Jesus was kind of like a footnote in it all. God in his word did not govern our behavior. We govern our behavior. God in his word did not put boundaries on us. There was no call to holiness. It was, we do what we want because we are essentially a God unto ourselves. In the name of Jesus, prosperity over your life like you've never had before. Well, that was Digger's, Digger's guru, mentor, Benny Hinn. That's who he learned from. Now he wants to say he's all holy. He's all holy. As he abuses a person who actually needed help, he, he sat here and gaslit a person who actually needed help. Friends would walk up to me and just be like, what the f*** is in your mug? And I would just tell them. When narcissists play the victim card, way healthy people behave okay um it is only sick mentally ill people who actually go around calling people witches and demons and try to destroy a person who has been so brutally abused and who's actually been brought back to the bible
to complete the path to get in oneness with God. I will put this video in the description. You see, all narcissists, when they are called out for their behavior, play the victim. Nithyananda does wonderfully saying how persecuted he is. When the cops are looking for him and Interpol is looking for him and he does nothing but destroy people's lives. As Digger was out here telling me that I was demon possessed. As every pastor out here was calling me a witch and a demon from their church stage. Where is Jesus in all of this? Where is Jesus in all of this? Tell me where. And you people have the audacity to call these demons men of God? You have the audacity to call these demons men of God? Here is the one thing that came to light for me today when I was talking to a real pastor. This demon is not even in my body. This demon is attached on the outside of my body. When this thing is touching me, I feel it on top of my body. This thing is not in my body. It's on the outside of my body. There's no way in hell that I have ever been demon possessed. And yet, this arrogant, prideful, prosperity, false prophet, preacher, abuser was out here telling me that I was demon possessed and I was not even a Christian. And I absolutely did not have the Holy Spirit here. And by the way, all of these people, you see all of these phonies out here slaying in the spirit. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. There's nothing written about that in the Bible. Nothing. The Holy Spirit fills us here to help us understand and interpret God's word. The only, the only reason the Holy Spirit is here is to glorify Jesus. Not to make any prosperity preacher look good. What does the Bible say about the prosperity gospel? The prosperity gospel, also known as the word of faith movement, the believer is told to use God, whereas the truth of biblical, biblical Christianity is just the opposite. God uses the believer. And this is what I have been saying out here ad nauseum. God is not our servant. God does not work for us. God is not a genie in a bottle that we rub the bottle and he grants us three wishes. So no matter how much you, how much money you're going to send to these people, God is not going to do for you anything unless it coincides with what he wants with you. That it coincides with his word, not with your greed. Do you understand? Prosperity theology sees the Holy Spirit as a power to be put to use for whatever the believer wills. Okay? That's what they all say. And the key word to listen for is when they tell you to sow into their ministry. To sow into their ministry. That's the key word they all use. The Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit is a person who enables the believer to do God's will. The prosperity gospel movement closely resembles some of the destructive greed sects that infiltrated the early church. Paul and the other apostles were not accommodating to or conciliatory with the false teachers who propagated such heresy. They identified them as dangerous false teachers and urged Christians to avoid them. Paul warned Timothy about such men in 1 Timothy 6, 5, 6, 5 and 9, 11. 
These men of corrupt mind supposed godliness was a means of gain and their desire for riches was a trap that brought them into ruin and destruction. The pursuit of wealth is a dangerous path for Christians and one which God warns about. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierce themselves with many griefs. If riches were reasonable, if riches were a reasonable goal for the godly, Jesus would have pursued it, but he did not, preferring instead to have no place to lay his head, Matthew 8, 20, and teaching his disciples to do the same. It should also be remembered that the only disciple concerned with wealth was Judas. Amen. I will put that in the description. What does the Bible say about the prosperity gospel? This is open Bible. 1 Timothy 6, 8. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. 3 John 1, 2. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. doesn't say send your money in for God to heal you. Malachi 3, 10. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. 2 Corinthians 8, 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that, th that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. 1 Timothy 6, 5, and constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and depraved of truth, imagining that godliness is a means of gain. This is it in a nutshell. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Deuteronomy 8.18, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives your power to get wealth, and he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your father, as it is this day. As I've stated, I will put this in the Luke 12.15, and he said to them, take care and be on your guard against all covetedness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. It's all over this Bible. And I have, I have absolutely said that you should find a local church. And if you are being fed there and your pastors are spirit filled, by all means you should tithe there. You should tithe. I have never spoken about not giving to a church. I, you've never heard me say that. For those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, we see exactly what's happening out here. Ask yourself, who benefited from Benny Hinn's numerous cars that he had? Who benefited from Benny Hinn's numerous homes that he had? Who benefited from Benny Hens big stages that he had for all those people? Who benefited from it? Who's benefiting from Digga's YouTube studio, his private YouTube studio? Who's benefiting from it? Who's benefiting from it? Well, he may con you to believe you're benefiting from it so that you can send him more money. After all, he's going to have to pay the electric now too, isn't he? I want to tell you something. It was these pastors who started this nightmare. And these pastors better end it. 
they better end it because I won't. I refuse to be a victim. Do you understand? And no one out here is going to abuse me. And as always, I speak truth and I back up everything I say. With scripture, with videos, with everything, I back up everything I say. And this guy has been gaslighting me for over a year. And if he does not stop, it's only going to get worse from this point on. Because now I'm just going to dig up every Benny Hinn video I can find. And then I'm going to dig up every covert narcissistic video I can find. And teach you all about the dangers of gaslighting. And how sick these people are. I suggest that this narc leave me alone. I really suggest that.